Hey everyone, greetings from London's Heathrow Airport. My name is Scott, I'm the founder and author of Sandspotter.com, and I'm here bright and early to catch Air New Zealand flight number one to Los Angeles. I just need to figure out how to get over to Terminal 2. Trains, tunnels, moving walkways. This is an adventure in and of itself, and I'm pretty much getting to experience it all this morning. Finally, it took about 25 minutes to traverse my way over from Terminal 4, but I didn't mind. As usual, I'm here way early and I've got plenty of time built into my schedule for unexpected delays. Delays such as 25 minutes of trains, tunnels, and moving walkways, for example. Anyway, Terminal 2 here at Heathrow is extremely impressive. Big, bright, and actually, hold on a second. Let's just make sure this flight isn't canceled or something before I put too much effort into this video. Since all the kiosks kept crashing whenever I pressed the Air New Zealand logo to initiate the check-in process, I ended up here, in the customer service queue. My apologies to the Heathrow IT department for crashing an entire row of kiosks. I guess I kinda had to expect that there would be more moving walkways, right? At least the scenery was nice, and I got a nice AV Geek style history lesson as I was being whisked to my gate. One of the nice things about all the minor delays this morning meant that I didn't have to wait all that long once I arrived at the gate. I only had an hour to kill, which may seem like a lot to most normal people. However, you should know by now that I ain't normal and what I was planning for was at least three hours of uninterrupted blog writing mixed in with a little plane spot. Air New Zealand, London to Los Angeles has been on my bucket list for as long as I can remember. So it was a bit of a challenge to lurk in the shadows pretending to be cool and normal just before they initiated the boarding process. I think I pulled it off successfully, though. I didn't see anyone pointing and staring in my general direction as I waited my turn to board. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Air New Zealand flight number one to LAX. I already see purple mood lighting, which looks fantastic. But beyond that, I'm really excited to discover what this airline is all about. Here's the business class bar, which I won't get to partake in today, followed obviously by business class. Can I just say that inward facing seats are the worst? I experienced that configuration on Virgin Atlantic once and I can't say that I enjoyed it. Anyway, passing through the premium economy section now, which looks great, and then of course, regular economy. That's how I roll. It's taken me well over 1 million miles of flying to get here, but I present to you the world's best economy class seats. For the record, I don't pay attention to sky tracks, ratings, or anything like that, so when I say world's best, I actually mean the best looking and most comfortable regular economy class seats that I have ever experienced. That's gotta mean something, right? Seriously, Emirates and Qatar Airways have got nothing on this. We haven't even left the gate yet, and I think I've found my favorite long haul economy class product in all the world. Here, let me show you all the things you get in economy on Air New Zealand. Starting with a blanket thick enough to keep you warm in the Arctic. Then there's the well padded headphones, perfect for watching trips with Rory videos, of course, and fully functioning USB power ports and full-size electrical outlets that actually work, unlike what I experienced on several other airlines so far on this trip.
while getting all settled in here at seat 40H, I couldn't help but to think that all those trains, tunnels, and moving walkways to get to this plane were totally worth it. By the way, the people sitting next to me were from Germany, and they were on their way to Fiji via LA and Auckland. That, my friends, is a long haul. Oh, and if you're looking for quality entertainment, do check out the Air New Zealand All Blacks safety video. Is there no better feeling than being on a flight that's headed home after a busy few days on the road? I've been traveling a lot this year, and as much as I enjoyed it, it gets difficult when packing so many flights into short periods of time. So excuse me while I wrap myself in this blanket like a burrito, chill out a bit, and enjoy that Air New Zealand hospitality all the way home to Southern California. How do guys like QFS Aviation fly so much without burning out? Even though my goal was to chill out and not do much of anything on this flight, that all fell apart once they announced free Wi-Fi during the welcome announcement. And it was good Wi-Fi too. So good, unfortunately, that I actually had no excuse not to get any work done before the meal service. Okay, Air New Zealand gets it. You know how ice cream on airplanes is usually served 10 times harder than diamonds and it's impossible to penetrate for at least 30 minutes? Somebody was using their noggin because it was served with the meal, giving it plenty of time to thaw while I messed around with the main course. As far as the meal itself, which was some kind of curry chicken thing, do I dare say that it was the best economy class meal that I've had so far this year? The guy next to me had the beef and potato option, which looked equally good. And since I still haven't been able to think of a non-threatening way of asking a complete stranger for video footage of his food, I can't deliver on that today. Sorry. Still seven and a half hours to go, there's still plenty more good stuff to show you. Would you believe that there's actually a chandelier on this plane? Wait for it. Nope, not this. Ah, <laughs> definitely not that. There it is. Yet another reason why this was one of my best long haul economy flights ever. It occurred to me during the walk back to my seat that I've heard very few negative things about Air New Zealand over the years, and I was starting to understand why. Yeah, I had to crash an entire row of kiosks in order to successfully check in this morning, but that's not the point. This is an incredibly good airline. If you've ever wondered how much light one open window shade will let into the cabin, here you go. I'm surprised the flight attendants didn't intervene, but nobody seemed to mind, so oh well. Want to know what makes Sandspotter happy? A bathroom with plenty of quality reading material. Okay, it's technically a lavatory and the books aren't real, but how freaking cool is this? If anything, it makes me think that there must be a servant up in the business class lavatory that'll spoon feed you caviar and champagne as you do your business. I gotta try that. Fast forward a few hours, and we're making really good time the further we push west. I am getting awfully thirsty, though. How come the flight attendants never come by with water when my cup is empty? As 
As usual, I'm always the last to know everything, and I didn't discover the Dine On Demand menu on the personal video screen until just a few hours before landing. It's kind of weird that the crew didn't advertise it at any point during the flight. That's okay, I guess, since I suppose it gave me a legitimate excuse to get up and take a walk back to the galley for water every now and then. Good news for those of you who are sick of me saying only nice things about Air New Zealand so far. This is the point in the video where I have a legitimate complaint. You see, the second meal service was one of those kind of meals that we all secretly crave, but always avoid because of how terrible we feel about ourselves after eating it. A mac and cheese pot pie with a piece of red velvet cake to wash it down? Sounds delicious, and it was, but good lord. Air New Zealand wants me dead. I'm sure of it. meal shaved a good five years off my life. On top of that, all I could do was just sit there and silently apologize to my body for what I had just done to it. I'm sorry, little buddy. Another neat little detail I forgot to show earlier, notification pop-ups on the screen that have to be manually dismissed. A pretty neat way to get everyone to pay attention, in my opinion. Just like that, welcome to Los Angeles. As far as I'm concerned, the attention to detail throughout the entire flight made this my best long haul economy class experience ever. Sorry Emirates, you've been forcefully bumped from my number one spot. Having arrived feeling great after sitting in an economy class seat for 12 hours, I can only imagine how good the business class experience would be. I'll get to it eventually, but as far as I'm concerned, I think Neil needs to do this as soon as possible for that Moments in the Sky video channel of his. That is a video I would love to see. Finally, a shout out to all my amazing patrons. Thanks so much for all your continued support, and it's because of you that Sandspotter content here on YouTube and on my blog continues to flow. For everyone else, I hope you're enjoying my content enough to like and subscribe if you're not already. Doing both tells me that you want to see more of this type of content, and well, I'm more than happy to oblige. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.